Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Janetry Solar video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a problem that version nine and newer power jack converters have with displaying output voltage. Before I get into that, 833 Genetry toll free Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern daylight time. You can text me at that number. You can send pictures at that number, et cetera, et cetera. It's like a normal phone number. Just keep in mind that if it's outside of business hours, I will not answer. And uh, so just be aware of that. Genetrysolar.com. You can find inverters there. Now, more and more I've been leaning into personalized service where you can't just go to the website, pick out an inverter, buy it, and you're done. Because I like to make sure that my customers understand um, just what the inverter is actually capable of. This, for example, is a 15,000 watt inverter, but I would not put more than probably about 10,000 watts on it, continuous. And even then, that's a stretch, even with all of the high-speed fans I've got and everything else in there. So uh, I like to make sure that my customers understand what they are going to actually get. That way they're not disappointed, that way nobody's losing any money, and everybody is happy. You're going to get a hell of a deal on an inverter, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a good, stable, and solid inverter. So I do like to have a personalized service and talk to my customers individually to make sure they understand what they are getting, what the limitations are, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I typically don't keep a lot of stock on the website. In fact, I'm probably going to be taking most of the stock down. Not that I don't have it. It'll be a placeholder, but you can give me a call and talk to me about your needs. Anyways, <clears throat> so it is, uh, what, Tuesday morning, I think. And I uh, got full on sun. It's about 8.30 a.m. I think. Full on sun. Uh, batteries are full. The inverter is literally running just off of the sun. And uh, one of the complaints that I get about version 9 and newer inverters is if you look right here. This affects even the Wi-Fi board, but it's not the Wi-Fi board's fault. If you look right here, you see this says 81 volts. That is your output voltage. Of course, 81 volts... This thing wouldn't be running on 81 volts. My whole house is running perfectly fine right now. So why is that saying 81 volts? What's wrong here? Well, oh, by the way, never reach into your inverter when it's running. I know what I'm doing. I know what's safe to touch, what's not safe to touch. There is a lethal amount of voltage in here. So just don't reach into your inverter when it's running. Okay? So if you look real close, I'm going to do something here that's going to change this number. Ooh, look at that. It's moving around. Ah, oh, look at that. It's moving around. What is going on here? Yikes. What is going on here? Why is that moving all over the place? Well, as it turns out, it is quite literally a wire harness. This is a stock power jack wire harness. This is what sends the data to the CPU as far as load. The hall sensor is connected here, and that hall sensor is actually what tells the CPU what kind of loads you have. And that information is read from, or read, yeah, the Wi-Fi board reads that information. So, uh, this connector right here is the culprit, and it only affects version nine inverters. So if you find this connector, be it a, 4,000 watt inverter. If it has an LCD screen, just follow the wires that lead up to the LCD screen. I guarantee you that this is the culprit. And you can see here how it's moving around as I wiggle and shake it and all this other stuff. Look at that. It's going all over the place. So unfortunately that affects the calculation on load. It actually affects the load because you can see my load has actually changed as it goes on and unfortunately I can't really calibrate this without actually fixing this harness. It has absolutely nothing to do with the board itself. It is quite literally the wires that are leading into the connector. For some reason whoever manufactured these connectors they did not do a very good job. See if I hold this then I'm getting a much more accurate reading. Of course it's going all over the place but um, there we go. So that's my around about my actual output. Uh, so you could 
zip tie these two wires together and that'll fix the problem. Personally, I haven't been worried about it because if my lights don't go on, then I know something's wrong. So this has never bothered me, but even a stock power jack inverter, people return inverters to me for warranty service because the LCD screen is not reading the correct voltage. They think that the inverter is not putting out the correct voltage. They don't have a multimeter or something else, so they immediately return it. The inverter is perfectly fine. And it's quite literally this wire harness right here. See, watch what happens when I actually let it go. Of course, it's not going to do it now, but let's wiggle it around a little bit. Yeah, see how it's moving all over the place? And if you can hear that, which you probably can't, the transformer is actually shifting. It's buzzing in a different tone because the CPU is making some adjustments based on what it is reading as far as voltage, which my load actually is not changing at all. You see, as you load down a power jack inverter, the CPU detects the voltage drop and it compensates by driving the MOSFETs even harder to try to maintain a stable voltage. So <clears throat> that right there is basically the, the, the reason why people are having some problems with their inverters is li quite literally that, that connector right there. This whole harness right here, for some odd reason, they just did an absolutely terrible job with this particular um, harness, and I really don't know why. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. I'm just uh, uh, hoping that uh, PowerJack will... I have sent this information to them. Hopefully they'll be able to fix the problem. We shall see. Oh, it got cloudy real fast. Man, there was a lot of beautiful sun out there, and now it's all cloudy. As you can see, my battery is kind of fluctuating a little bit. Yep, looks like the sun is coming back. So, anyways, yeah. So it's quite literally the connector that is leading up to your LCD screen. If you uh, want to fix this problem, um, you could uh, attempt to repair these wire harnesses here. Um, basically, they're just not making a very good connection with the uh, with the actual board itself. The connector that's inside the board is fine. It's the harness that plugs into the board is loose. They didn't do a very good job um, stamping or crimping the connector ends, so they don't make very good contact, and that's what's causing the actual problems. I am definitely putting out more than 230 volts. I'm right on the 240, 244 mark approximately in that area. So yeah, like I said, as I wiggle this around, it changes and it changes your load too because it's detecting a different load because the hall sensor is connected to that particular uh, wire harness. So yeah, it's kind of all over the place right now. But uh, so anyway, if um, yeah, if you're looking at a way to fix that that is the way you don't need to send your inverter to me um basically the only thing that i'm doing on a warranty service is i am making sure that that connector is fully connected and adding a little hot glue to it so it can't move around there's really nothing else that i can do with it um i am looking to get one of those uh end connector makers from PowerJack so that I can um, physically repair them rather than using kind of a band-aid to repair it. But unfortunately, I don't have those tools right now. Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, so there you have it. So now it seems to be working just fine. But as soon as I put this lid down, it's gonna compress these wires, which will then push down on that, and it's not gonna work fine. It's not a concern for me personally. It's not a concern simply because I know that my inverter is running fine. I know that. But for someone else, especially if you install a Wi-Fi board and you look at this, you're like, oh, this Wi-Fi board sucks. It's not even showing me the right output. It's likely that connector right there. So that is a problem. And unfortunately, the Wi-Fi board cannot fix that problem. It cannot compensate for that misreading uh, of the data. Uh, it only reads, you know, the data that comes in and then calculates load and stuff like that based on that actual data so that's basically it um 
yeah, I've been online for 39 minutes this morning. Not long, but again, my total hours is only four days because I reset this thing so much. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. This is the Wi-Fi board. I highly recommend that you go out and get one for your inverter. It is compatible with all inverters that have an LCD screen from version 7 on up. Uh, and uh yeah so it's um it's working really well i have been super super happy with this wi-fi board this is a revision c board so it is the newest one we have a c1 hopefully that will be out here in a little bit uh we'll have to see obviously but um yeah it's uh it's working really 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 well and i have not had any problems with it at all other than little bug fixes that, you know, obviously being that I'm a tester for this, if we get an update for it, we're testing a feature that may cause the Wi-Fi board to shut down or something like that. That's that's all testing, but you wouldn't know that. <sighs> Look at that. Look at all those sensors on there. I'm quite literally monitoring every square inch of this inverter. I got even, I have even ambient temperature in here. Yeah, it's a lot to scroll through. There we go. There's our ambient temperature, 63 degrees in this room. <laughs> uh, the most it's ever seen is 73, which I'm not understanding why, because it's definitely not been 73 in this room. It might be a fluke of some kind. Um, but yeah, there's the main board temperature, there's the transformer temperature, and then all of these sensors here are all the ones that I have actually added to the inverter. I'm occupying every single space on this board and you can see all those wires coming out of there it is running wonderful and i cannot imagine ever going back to a non wi-fi board uh inverter i just it just i don't know it just feels like they're so dumb <laughs> the the old lcd screens are so dumb but anyways so enough about that you guys uh you guys know the drill you can get your wi-fi board at genitreesolar.com of course if you're interested you can pick up your high speed fans we are working with a supplier to get fans that are have a wide range so you don't need what i have here which is a buck converter which limits the current to the fans to in my case i have it set to 55 volts because even if the fans are not spinning like in this case these fans are all receiving 55 volts right now even though they're not spinning they are receiving 55 volts and As Sid likes to call these things, little screamers. And yes, they are little screamers. They are extremely fast, and they do a superb job keeping the uh, inverter nice and cool. So, looking forward to summer when I'm generating a lot of electricity, running my air conditioner, and I'm looking forward to loading this thing down as much as I possibly can to see how well it's able to handle this uh, uh, load, basically. So yeah, we're looking okay right now. So anyways, all right, if you have any questions, let me know. 833-GENITRY, toll-free, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. GenitreeSolar.com, get yourself a Wi-Fi board. I guarantee you, you're going to be super happy with the abilities. It's remote, it's Wi-Fi, it's every setting under the sun. If you want to see what it will do, head over to the website. Click on the Wi-Fi board section and the instruction manual is there so you can see what all you can tweak what all you can do everything is there read it get interested buy one i can send you the complete kit that is required to make the conversion depending on your needs and i know that you're going to be extremely happy with your purchase you will turn your inverter into a more reliable more stable more 
powerful inverter, quite literally. This thing does a superb job managing the inverter. And Sid did an awesome job designing this. And we are still working on it. This is not a project that has come to a close. We have major revisions that we will be getting um, someday we're going to have a nice sine wave that's going to be displayed on the inverter uh, LCD screen. Wouldn't that be cool to actually see how healthy your sine wave is? That would be awesome. Not everybody has an oscilloscope, and they're expensive to get a good one. So wouldn't it be cool to be able to see your actual sine wave output right here? Wouldn't that be awesome? So yes, yeah, so we have features in the pipeline we're working on. We're also working on the inverters themselves and redesigning stuff. We are very, very busy. The goal is to create a product that you will be absolutely happy with. And I have been super happy with my current inverter. This thing is a beast. It does have its shortcomings, but what I do in my business is I try to eliminate as many of those shortcomings as possible and educate my customers as well as you on what these are capable of where their limits are what all you can do with them so that you don't have any expectations beyond what they are actually capable of delivering there's tweaks there's all sorts of things that you can do to improve the performance of these things and so that is my goal is to try to get you a nice solid and stable inverter if you have any questions, let me know, obviously. And as always, everyone out there, stay safe and take care.